can take your place in me like a raging wind I can feel you here I lift my hands to thee Holy Spirit overflow changing every heart to we can't get enough of your presence We lift our voice to thee. You make all things new. You make all things new. Now I'm beautiful. Cause you make all things new Sing again You make all things new You make all things new You make all things new Now I'm beautiful Cause you make all things new Yeah you my righteousness. You're my righteousness. No one, no one, no one can take your place in me. Like a raging, like a raging wind. I lift my hands. Holy Spirit. Overflow. Changing every heart. Oh, 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 we can never get enough. Oh, 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 oh. We live to You make all things new. You make all things new. Now I'm beautiful Cause you make all things new With your hands lifted up sing You make all things new, yeah You make all things new Now I'm beautiful that I can do anything <laughs> You make all things new for me. Look at me, look at Jesus and live, because He makes all things new. He makes all things so beautiful. Oh. 
Whatever it is, whatever you're going through right now, he can make all things new. <laughs> Cause he makes all things new for me. You mesmerize me. Cause you make all things new. Yeah. My life is forward, forward. Cause you make all things new. Jesus, Jesus, what the reckless love displayed for us. <laughs> What the victorious race you've won for me I'm beautiful oh, Cause you make all things new Somewhere along the way You stopped believing But I want to reignite that passion inside of you So you can dream again Have you Thoughts in your mind that your greatest season has passed you by. You feel your best days. You feel your best days have all slipped away. And all that's left. And all that's left for you. It's just one chapter. It's not over. This is not the end of your story. It's a new season. It's your moment. I want you to own it. Right now. Again. What seems like the end is where your future begins. Your dream doesn't look like your current reality, but believe again. believe again. Because you haven't lost nothing that God can't replace. If you can just find a way to dream again. You were created for more than just existing. Live. You may have to step away from what's familiar and believe it. Don't let comparison kill your dreams. Because I know some of you are feeling like you should be further along right now. It's not too late. I think it's not too late. Yeah. It's not too late. Just because it hasn't come doesn't mean it's not coming. It's not too late. You're still breathing and your heart's still beating. It's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. God's going to finish what he started. It's still going to happen. It's not too late. You get ready to get payback. For every dream you throw it's shut down. Yeah. You didn't just do it for me. I'm a witness. Come here, Tom. I was broken, but now I'm I was rejected, but now I'm I was depressed, but you gave me on. It's time to dream again. Dream again. Anybody ever been broken into pieces, but now you're They rejected me, but I was so broken and depressed. They gave me joy. It's time to dream again. Dream again. My life was broken into pieces. They rejected me, but I was so sad and depressed. But you gave me the best time to dream again. I thought I would lose my mind, but you changed me, rejected me, and left me for dead. You can't hold me, you can't hold me This time to dream again, dream again Oh, think that we believe And all we'll do is For a new season, a new season Hold on, hang on Whatever you do, dream again it's not over. It's not over. I know it feels like it, but it's not over. That's got you. Just feel it. Hang in there. Now somebody worship. 
Come on, somebody say, I'll get my dream back. I'll get my joy back. I'll get my power back. God's put too much inside of you. you need to live again. I know your faith's been shaken, but believe. You need to believe again. I can't do it for you. But you gotta find a way to believe in yourself you need to and dream again. Just want to encourage you, remind you the best is still yet to come. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans on you. And although you may think that your time has passed, God's only saving the best for last your future greater than your past I like it when you say say it like yeah. and although you may think time has passed Saving the best for last, your future greater than my son Yolanda Adams. I have a word to share with you. Share it. Those who feel God has forgotten you. I know you. Your time has passed. God's only saving the best for last, and your future greater than your past. I can hear you saying that life won't give you a break. Give you a break. Every step forward, ten steps back. You take, but God is the master of strategy, and He's only confusing the enemy. He's getting you ready for your greatest victory. And although it's been bad in the past, that your time has passed, God's only saving the best for last. Your future greater is greater. The best for last. Sing your future greater than your past. Say it for the best. Come on, say it for the last. I can when you say it like your future greater than your past. Try city, come on, join us. Walk in 
Now, sometimes she doesn't know that she knows. And sometimes she forgets that she knows. There are also the times when a woman doubts what she knows. 
Because for so many women, for so long, we have been talked out of what we know. But I know that what a woman knows is etched into the fibers of her soul. But unfortunately, far too many women simply don't have the tools to unearth their knowing. But if there's one thing that I know for sure, it's that a woman, every woman, knows some things. Welcome my sister women from all over the country, all over the world. Welcome to this rites of passage orientation video. For those who plan to participate in the program and for those who are just curious, I want you to know that there are thousands of women here today, which means we have an opportunity to implant a powerful energy on the planet, in the world. So I wanna invite you to join me in doing that right now. Please join me in just coming fully present to this right now moment, fully present. And if you're not driving, I invite you to allow your eyelids to close. Just allow your eyelids to close. Relax your body and breathe. We breathe in, we breathe out. Coming fully present to right here, right now, women inhale, thinking I am. Women exhale thinking, I am woman. Women inhale thinking, I am. Women exhale thinking, I am woman. As we inhale, we inhale the grace and the power that we are as women. And we relax into this moment. And we breathe, I am. And we exhale, life. We inhale, I am. And we exhale, woman. What a grace, what a joy to inhabit the flesh form as a female on the planet at this time. I am woman. And that means I am life. I am grace. I am power. I am, I am woman. Breathing in, I am life. Breathing out. The magnificence, the ever-expanding, growing life, I am. I am woman. Allowing it it's full power, it's full grace, it's full honor, dignity, majesty to grow within me, I am. Breathing in, love. I am love. I am grace, I am power, I am love. I am woman. I am life and love and grace. I am. Let's allow those words to move through your body and allow them to bring you joy. The joy of being a woman. The joy of knowing I am. Just breathe. 
and we breathe. And we relax. And we give thanks. I am woman. Again, I want to welcome <clears throat> each of you to this morning. I've seen people coming in from all over. Uh, and it's just such a joy to be here with you this morning as we talk about ROP 2023, the Rites of Passage program that <clears throat> we will be engaging upon or commencing upon very, very soon. And I wanted to come this morning to talk to you a little bit about the program, about the process. Hello, South Africa. I saw South Africa. I saw Brazil. I saw Germany. Of course, Brooklyn is in the house. Can't do it without Brooklyn. I saw Detroit and Chicago. And I saw Atlanta. I saw Trinidad and Tobago. I saw um, London, I believe. Yeah. I saw Canada. I saw LA. So we're all here as women gathering this morning just to get a little insight. So I want to talk to you about this rites of passage program, this rites of passage process that we will be offering <clears throat> beginning today. If you are interested, you can sign up today. But let's talk about what it is because so many of us as women have no clue about rites of passage because we didn't get the opportunity to have our rites of passage. And for many of us who are working and growing in our lives, what I want you to know that it doesn't take a miracle and it doesn't take hard work all of the time. It takes trust and belief and forgiveness. Those are the three things that will create the miracles that you desire in your life. And that's what we want to do with rites of passage, create miracles in your life. So people are asking, why this? Why now? Because as I've shared with you many times, we are in the year of the seven. And the seven is about reflection and rest. It's also about renewal and rebirth. The number seven, 2023, the number seven. And for women, that is a very sacred, sacred time because it's a time when we can retreat within, retreat to the center of our being, to listen, to clear, to heal, to grow so that we have a major impact on the planet. So it's time. And if you've been wondering what to do next and how to do it. If you're tired of running in the same circle, round and around, over and over, perhaps it's time for you now. Yeah. So what is a rites of passage? This program, this is a program that myself and the uh, God Squad, the Inner Visions Institute God Squad, and you're going to meet some of them today. Uh, we started back in 1996. And a rites of passage is a formal process of transformation. It requires a metamorphosis, a change, a total change from the inside to the outside. And that rites of passage usually culminates with a celebration and a ceremony, an initiation, if you will, of women moving from one way of being to another, from one age stage to another. And that's what we are inviting you to participate in. So what is it? Let's take a look. It is, this is what I want to talk to you about today. What a rites of passage is, why it's important at any age. I want to talk for a minute about the realities of being a woman in this world today. I want to talk to you about the stages of a woman's life because many of us are not taught about the various stages of our life. I want to talk to you about the aspects that are in our being as women that helps us to know things. I want to talk about the development of our soul. And I want to talk about what you can expect in this rites of passage process and what you need to know in order to prepare to participate. 
So that's our intention. I like to set that out so you know what you're getting when you show up, okay? <laughs> so let's be clear. What does it mean, rights? Because I don't want you to think this is a, a religious thing or a, a some kind of cult group meeting because today in today's world, particularly on social media, people make up all kinds of stuff. Right simply means a formal or dignified series of actions or a ceremony. It is a prescribed form and manner of doing a certain thing. It's a ceremonial practice of individuals or groups. So when we talk about rites of passage, we're talking about things that we are going to do in a formal way. There is a prescribed manner for us to do these things. And we want to create it in a way that's ceremonial, in a way that's sacred. It's not just something else to do because that will not create the metamorphosis or the transformation that we desire. So it's rights. You don't have to drink nothing. You don't have to <laughs> go nowhere. You will be doing this in your own uh, home until we come together. So what is passage? Passage is the act or process of moving through, under, over, or past something on the way to another place. And that's what we are doing. We're moving through this stuff, under it, over it, past it, the places that we may be stuck in our mind, in our heart, and in our lives as women. A passage, it's a narrow way, and it allows you access from one location to another. We're not moving physically, some of us may, we want to move mentally, emotionally, and spiritually so that we can create physical movement. Yes? Just put yes in the chat if you understand. So the rites of passage, passage is also about a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. That's what transformation is. It's a change of how we are, our nature. It's a change from one thing to the other. It's a metamorphosis that we go through in the life of in, in our life cycle. So when we talk about rites of passage, we're talking about making a thorough and dramatic change in how we be. Let's take a breath on that one. Now, how we change as women happens on four levels. It happens on the physical level, that's our body. It happens on the emotional level, how we, our needs and our desires and how we express ourselves. It happens on the mental level, the intellectual level, our cognitive ability to grasp and understand. And it also happens on the spiritual level. Now it happens for men on all four of those levels also, but we're not talking about men today. We're talking about us, okay? So this is where we change. However, when I Googled, I just wanted to Google because I wanted to give you good information. I Googled how a woman changes and to my horror, my shock and horrification, <laughs> the only thing that I got was physical. And I'm gonna talk to you about that. So by participating in this program, in this process, in this sacred ceremony, you're going to be able to identify what's been holding you back mentally, emotionally, or spiritually, or physically. You're going to be able to increase your level of self-mastery, and you're going to be able to expand your power to hold on to, to create, to move forward. Because we have been programmed, taught, and conditioned to do everything on a masculine framework. And through this rites of passage, we're going to learn how to do it as us, as women. Identify, increase, and expand beyond the physical, because everything is not physical. So when I Googled how a woman changes, I want to share with you, I found 12,869,000,000 entries on Google. Don't believe me, go do it. And this is what I found. I'm going to share with you some of them. How women's bodies change with age, 30s, 40s, 50s, and beyond. After age 30, women tend to lose lean tissue. 
Well, thank you for telling me that. Your muscles, kidney, liver, and other organs may lose some of their cells. Well, that don't make me feel good. <laughs> and I want you to know this article specifically dealt with women as if it doesn't happen to men. Then the next one says, the change before the change. During this period, bones start changing because you're losing estrogen and progesterone. Again, what we're losing, what we're, what we're uh, getting rid of, but not in a good way. Then it says, how a woman's body changes. 10 changes that naturally occur among women turning 40. 40, irregular menstrual periods, weight gain, hair loss, hot flashes, and low libido. Now, is that exciting? If you are a woman, do you want to go and read that about yourself? And 70% of the things that I read were written by men. I don't need nobody. Wait a minute. Let me just look you in your face and tell you this. I don't need nobody to tell me my breast is going to fall. That was a reality. <laughs> when I woke up on my 42nd birthday, I don't need nobody to tell me that I'm not going to be able to see because I all of a sudden I just I couldn't see nothing. OK, and that's why I have the Baxter Blue eyewear line. <laughs> so when you leave here, go over and take a look at Simplicity by Yamla uh, for Yamla by Baxter Blue. But anyway, these are the things that were on the Internet about us, about us as women. OK, oh, wait a minute. There's more really exciting. OK. This was a big one. Eight ways women's bodies change after 40. And this is what they say. We've put together eight changes that can occur to women in their 40s. Read how you can remedy as if you can stop the process, alleviate, or even accommodate this change. Your metabolism begins to slow down, which leads to weight gain. Well, thank you very much, as if I didn't know that. Hair loss increases as estrogen production decreases and your bladder can sometimes elude your control. Okay, so I'm gonna be bald, won't have no sex drive and I'll be peeing on myself. This is on the internet. <laughs> it's bad enough if you're 40 or 50 or 60, you already know this, but this would scare the bejesus out of the 20s and the 30s, right? And this is how they write about us, okay? Now, this one was extremely exciting to me. Listen, look at this one. This was on the internet. Understanding the life stages of women to enhance your practice. So this was written by a doctor to other doctors, telling him what you need to know about women so you can grow your practice. So to these people, we are just a commodity because so many of them know more about us than we know about ourselves. And so many of them make up what they know about us, okay, as women. This was on the internet. I did not make this stuff up. I just went on and found these 12 billion entries, okay? And then at the end, when I scrolled through and I was looking, there was this thing that said search ads right in the middle of it. And this is what they had, how to quickly get rid of mice in the house. <laughs> Right in the middle of how a woman changes comes up this thing about how to get rid of mice in the house. Can you imagine? Okay. Can you imagine? So my point is this, beloved. It's time for us to get in touch with who we are as women. It's time for us to shift out of the way we've been taught and programmed and conditioned to live our lives as women, because it's a whole nother level of being, a whole nother way of being. It doesn't mean that how we've done what we've done is wrong or bad. It's just obsolete. I don't know about you, but how this world is working right now, it's not working for me. And I have to take a different approach I have to take a different way of being. And as I mature and, and age, you know, you, you, you've got to, you've got to increase in your age. That's going to happen. But I don't have to live up to all of these things. I want to tell you a, a story. Okay. Let me tell you a quick story. Y'all know I do love to tell a story. So th there was this farmer and his wife, and they had one son. 
and they lived way out in the in the country and they had lots of land and that's how the farmer made took care of his wife and his son he farmed the land he produced crops and he had the vision of his son growing up to be a farmer just like him and the wife you know she was a wife that's what she did she took care of her son and her husband and she did a little baking to earn some extra money because a woman got to have her own money. Okay. She did a little baking and a little sewing and she interacted with the neighbors, sold things at the church. So long about the time the boy turned five, <clears throat> the mother started talking to the father about the boy going to school. He needs to go to school. I want him to go to school. Don't you want your son to go to school? And the father, he was OG. No, he don't need to go to school. He's going to inherit all of this land. He needs to know how to farm this land. He needs to know how to work these, uh, work this field. That's what he needs to know. And the mother didn't argue. She just kept speaking at dinner and at breakfast. And she used her pillow time talk mm -hmm. to talk to the father about the benefits and the value of their son going to school. So finally, when the boy, when it came around, he finally just gave a grunt and a moan. Okay, he can go, but he's going to have to do his chores in the morning. He's going to have to do his chores when he comes home at night because that's all he needs to know. And the mother said, okay. So school started and the mother would get up with the son every morning. And she would help him with his chores and make his breakfast and make sure that he got out the, school, the door to go to school. And when he came home from school, she'd have a little snack for him. And then she'd help him around doing what he had to do so that the father would know that he was in school and he was doing his chores. Well, this went on for 12 years. And when it was time for the son to graduate, there is, of course, the this, this senior dance. And he wanted, he wanted to go to the senior dance. So he talked to his mom and his mom talked to his dad. And the dad said, he don't need to be going out there dancing with Satan's music and, and drinking hard liquor. And the mother said, oh, it's just something that they do. Well, he can go, but I'm not buying him nothing. And the mother said, okay. So the mother took her little cake and sewing money out of her pocket. She went into town to the used clothing store and she got him a nice suit and a shirt and a pair of shoes. And she brought it home and she tailored it up and hemmed it up. And the day of the dance came and the son came downstairs from his bedroom and his father saw him and his heart burst open with pride, but he wouldn't say a word. So he just looked at him and he, and he said, how are you gonna get to the dance? And he says, well, I'm gonna walk the 12 miles. The father said, hmm. And so the young man did, he went out and his father said to him, be back by 11. And the young man said he would. So he went out the door and he was about maybe a half a mile up the road and he heard the sound coming behind him. And when he turned around, his father was there with the pickup truck. He stopped the truck, jumped out of the truck, threw the keys at the boy and told him, be back here with my truck at 11. So the young man jumped in the, in the truck, drove off the 12 miles to the school, went to the dance and had a great time checking his watch. He knew he had 12 miles, that was 15 minutes. So at 10.45, right on time, he went outside to get in the truck and found that there was a tsunami of rain, buckets pouring down out of the sky. He ran through the rain, got in the truck, started it up and driving as slow as he could, already frightened and aware, uh, aware that he wasn't gonna make this in 15 minutes, he just couldn't. He, there was too much rain. So he tried to speed up as much as he could and the truck skid and slid and slid off the road down into a ditch. He gets out and he's looking around nine miles from school, three miles from home. There's no way he's going to make it. It's 1050 and he pushes and he pulls in mud up to his ankles, rain pouring down on him. There's nothing he can do. No one else is coming up the road. The dance isn't over until midnight. So he decides I'm gonna run the three miles home. It's, not, it's 10.55 and he takes off dripping mud in the pouring rain. He runs the three miles and he gets home, it's 11.10. And he runs to the front door and he grabs the, the handle and he pulls it and it doesn't open. Very strange. They never lock the door. So he runs around the back to the kitchen door and he pulls it and 
it doesn't open. Oh my goodness, what is going on? So he runs back around to the side where he knows his mother usually keeps the window up and the screen in to get a little cross breeze in the house. And he pulls the window, pulls the window, pulls the window. It won't open. It's drenched in mud, soaked in rain. He sits down on the front porch. And then he gets the idea. Let me go around and get the ladder and climb up to my bedroom so that I can get in. And he goes around and he gets the ladder. He props the riggedy wooden ladder up against the house and he climbs up to his bedroom. He takes a deep breath and he lifts, he lifts, he lifts and the window flies open. And when he looks down, he sees three nails on the windowsill. And when he looks up, he sees his mother moving by. The letter of the law and the spirit of the law. The father represents the masculine way, the power, the dominion, sometimes the brute force. We call it a tsunami or a volcano. It's divine, it's just brute. And the mother represents the spirit of the law, the feminine aspect, the heart, the compassion, the grace, the forgiveness. That's where we wanna be because the farmer father isn't working in the world anymore. The power, the aggressiveness, the aggression, the, dom the control. As women, we want dominion. We want nobility. We want divinity. We want majesty. That means we can't do it the old way. We can't just be the letter of the law. We've got to move in to the spirit of the law. And that's what we're offering you with rites of passage. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you for a moment about the stages of womanhood. So many of us don't know that there are stages that we go through in our being and in our consciousness. There's the first stage or when you really are considered woman, you're not a girl. And that's the princess stage. And that stage is 14 to 20. And so many of us as women didn't have that stage. In Rites of Passage, we're going to talk about what that stage is and what happens when you don't complete that stage. The next stage is the bride, ages 21 to 29. Does that mean you have to get married? No, but it's a consciousness. It's a way of being that happens naturally in the universe, in nature for us as women. And so many of us didn't get to complete that stage, didn't get to go to, to experience the benefits of that stage because of the experiences that we had. The next stage in a woman in womanhood is mother. Does that mean you have to birth children? No. It's what happens in the universe, what happens to us in consciousness, what happens to us organically and naturally. And so many of us did our mother stage at our princess age or never got to do the bride stage before we became a mother. And so there are things that are off in our consciousness. Again, doesn't mean you have to be married, doesn't mean you have to birth children, but there are things going on in you that need to be mastered. And when they're not mastered in one stage, you carry it over to the next stage. And that's why so many of us feel stuck. The next stage is really becoming a woman, an adult. And that doesn't happen till you're 40. And so many of us, have adult responsibilities and really think and feel like we are adults when we're 20. <laughs> and that means we're moving too fast or we become mothers so early, we don't think that we ever got to feel like a woman. And that means that we're moving too slow, okay? And there are lessons and things that we have to do in each stage of our life in order to develop fully, to become the spirit of the law, to become the grace, the majesty of being woman. The next stage, 50 to 59, that's sage, that's wise woman. And so many of us, because we didn't complete woman, we didn't complete mother, again, not having children, but the natural organic process, we get to be 50 and we're sad and we're broken and we're lost and we're bitter because we didn't complete the previous stages. And then we get to be elder, grandmother, 60 to 69. 
their responsibilities that we have to the universe that no one has ever taught us about. There are responsibilities that we have to other women that no one has ever taught us about. And because we didn't complete our wise woman stage, we didn't complete our woman stage, we didn't complete our mother or our bride or our princess, we get to be elders and we're out of order, out of order. Then there's the warrior healer stage, 70 and above, when we have a responsibility to our community, to our family, and to ourselves. Nowhere are we as women learning what is encompassed in these stages and what it means and what it is that we have to do. You see, in every stage as a woman, Every stage, your princess stage, your bride stage, your wife stage, your woman stage, your sage stage, there's a role, there's a way to be, there's a blessing, what we receive, there's a gift, meaning what we give, there's a lesson that we must learn and master, there's a grace that we must move and live in in order to make everything work. There's a level of emotional development that we have to master. There's a healing that we must engage in order to remain balanced. And there's a ritual that we must do for ourselves in order to heal. As women, how many of you even know what this is? What is your role in your age stage? What is your blessing, your gift, your lesson? Everybody's running around screaming about my purpose, my purpose, my purpose. Your first purpose is to be your original self as a woman, to be authentic as a woman, and to know how to take care of yourself as a woman. These are our developmental needs. And the old world was teaching it. And now they don't teach us. Now they don't teach us. We don't even know that this is going on. And it's not anything you have to do, my beloved sister women. This is how we have to be. This is going on inside of us. You know, when I turned, I don't know how old, when I turned 60, I started having a craving for Brussels sprouts. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? Why am I craving a Brussels sprout? As a child, I used to swallow them whole. <laughs> and now at 60, I want Brussels sprouts. I want them crispy. I want them with nuts and crab. But what is wrong? Well, your palate changes. And the same way your palate changes, your internal needs change. But in this society, as women, we're not taught about that. Okay? We're not taught about that. And as a result, many of us are out of order. <laughs> we're living the letter of the law and we don't even believe in the spirit of the law. Yeah. All right. So again, I want to talk about the aspects of our consciousness, because just like there are way, the aspects of how we be within each of those, in the bride, in the mother, in the wise woman, there are other aspects of our consciousness. And at any given time, one of these aspects could be taken over and running your life and you don't even know it. Well, the first one is the little girl. Were her needs met? Did she get what she needs? Then there's the damsel in distress. She can't do nothing. She's codependent. She is dysfunctional. Every, all of us have a piece of that. Then we have the fighter and the biatch. That's the one who's been hurt and wounded and damaged, and she's going to make everybody pay. I'm telling you, we all have this or some aspect of this in our consciousness, and they come out because of the work that we didn't complete within our growing, okay? Then we also have the friend. Most of us know how to be a good, good friend. We know how to be a friend to everybody except ourselves. Then there's the companion the one that wants to be with others, whether it's a partner or, or a child, or there's that part. And in every woman, whether you birth the child or not, there is that nurturing spirit of the law, the part of you that will take the nails out the window because you know the boy was trying to get home and did the best he could. The part of you that's not going to punish somebody, the part of you that's going to give them another chance, the part of you that's going to pow, pow their butt and shake the finger, but love them anyway. Whether you've had children or not, this is in you. And this is the part of you that sometimes gives more people chances when you don't need to give them chances. But if the mother is running the show, you're not going to be able to stand fully in yourself as an adult. 
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I hope this is making sense to you. Within every woman, there's a hustler. <laughs> I know I got one. This is the one that's going to get what she wants by any means necessary. Okay? She going to tell the story. She going to do the dance. She going to say what she got to say. She going to stay up all night long. She's going to call people. She's going to bully people. She's going to threaten people. Yeah, you got that. No, none of this is bad or wrong. It's just, when are they operating? And how do you know? And do they make good things happen or not so good happens? In all of us, once you hit that, that princess stage, there's an adult, a responsible adult. What it means to be an adult is, first of all, that you take responsibility for yourself. And you give yourself enough room or rope to make mistakes and then you self-correct. That's what an adult is. But what undercuts the adult very often is the victim. Somebody's always doing something to me. They did it. And because of this, and because this happened and that happened. And if the victim is rolling out the, the red carpet, you're not going to be able to take responsibility for your life as an adult or you'll hustle your way through life. And you'll never step fully into your power. I want you to know, I'm not talking to you as though I don't know this. I've been all of these. I've been the biatch and the fighter. I've been the hustler. I've been the victim. I've been the little girl weeping and whining. And I've been the damsel in distress. So that is how I know that these exist in all of us. Not right, not wrong, not good, not bad. The thing is, do you know how they operate in your life? And do they show up at appropriate or inappropriate times? Because when these aspects of your consciousness are operating, if you don't know it, you will make choices, decisions. You will do things that you then have to answer for as a able-bodied person. Okay? So that's why I want to bring this. And these are the things in rites of passage. We're going to identify these people. We're going to see how they're operating. We're going to put them in check. So that we have more dominion, not control, but dominion. Men see control. The father wanted control. The mother wanted dominion. You see, you notice in that story, she never, ever argued. She didn't fight. She used her calmness, her peace, her grace, her elegance, and her pillow time. She was hustling. She was pillow hustling. <laughs> but her son went to school. And he went to the dance. Do we as women know how to do that? Or we just use our mouth and our minds. Mind is a wonderful thing if you use it correctly. But here's where we're moving to, my beloved. We want to move into the high priestess. That part of us that heals. That part of us that's aligned with nature, with the universe. That part of us that's aligned with God's source creator of our understanding. We want to bring forward and stand in our warrior, not the fighter. There's a distinction between a fighter and a warrior. A fighter usually does it for money or ego needs. The warrior does it for the good of the queendom, okay? You want to be a warrior. There are principles that go along with being a warrior. And, and the first one is to eliminate suffering, yours and that of others. And then there's the queen. You know, people think they want to be a diva. I do not want to be a diva. I want to be a queen. I want to be seated fully in my throne with my crown on straight. Because sometimes I can't find the throne. And other times I'm in the throne, but my crown is crooked. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's okay. The blessing is that I know it. I know when my crown is crooked. So when we walk through rites of passage, our goal is to get you right here, to identify the high priestess, to identify the warrior, to seat the queen so that you have dominion and majesty in your life. Now, for some of us, this means everything about us needs to change. And that's a process. That is a process. It's not gonna happen overnight. And for others of us, it means some shifts, some changes, and it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy, but it is necessary. So it's going to require a commitment of time on your part, a commitment of time, a commitment of energy, a commitment of intention, and yes, a commitment of finances. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So 
This is where we're headed. At, and this is what our ceremony and our initiation is about, calling forth the high priestess and the warrior and the queen. Yeah, I love it. Do you love it? Yeah. And what happens when our rites of passage didn't happen, when we weren't trained, when we weren't, uh, when we weren't taught by the elder women, when we weren't honored and valued for the beauty of who we are? What happened is that we were programmed out of our power and we looked to everything and everyone else to empower us. What happened is that we were conditioned to live with fear, to be afraid of ourselves, of people, of the process. We were trained as women to seek external acceptance and validation, cosmetic surgery, wigs, nails, hair, all of that, not bad. Not wrong. It's just that far too many of us put more meaning in that than we do in getting the silent guidance when we sit in the sofa quietly. Yeah? This is what happened because our rights didn't happen. Take a breath. Now, what happens when our rights do happen? When our rights do happen, we can clear fears that have kept us blocked. We can activate our intuition. We can remove beliefs that block us. We can create clear, solid boundaries. Because when we understand who's operating, how they're operating in our consciousness, how to take care of them, how to sit them down, or how to empower them and bring them forward at the appropriate times, it activates your personal power. We want power in the world. We want to be powerful women, and we can't control the fighter in our own consciousness. When you understand the aspects of your consciousness and who you are and where you are as a woman, you can magnify your life purpose. Stop looking for it. Your life purpose gave birth to you. You're not going to find it outside of yourself. But we've been trained and conditioned to believe that's where it is. When you understand who you are in the aspects of your consciousness and the stage of life that you're in, you develop an inner authority that allows you to find solutions and make life easier. And that's what we want as women. Far too many of us are dying from hard work. Far too many of us are dying from hard work. So this program, this process is for you if you're ready to create the life you desire. If you're ready to change. And listen to me. I want to say this again. Who you are just as you are. What you've done as you've done it. Wasn't bad wasn't wrong, but doing it that way now is simply obsolete. It doesn't work. It doesn't work anymore to think you're going to go to school, go to college, get a good job, find somebody to marry, whoever it is that you want, and then live the rest of your, it's, that's not happening when gas is 359 and we don't know who's coming over to tear up what, but we're not going to have that conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So if this is where you are, this is for you. This is an opportunity. Now, listen, I want to be real clear. This program is not for you. If you're not ready to make a commitment to yourself, if you still got so many things that you can't give yourself an hour a day of your life just for you, this is not for you. And that's okay. This may not be the time. Please don't feel bad. It may not be the time. Yeah? This program is not for you. If you're not really willing to look at yourself, tell the absolute truth and do the work to make the change, please don't sign up. Don't. This, when you're not coming here to get no questions answered. You're coming here to do your work, to grow in yourself. You'll be guided. You'll be supported. You'll be encouraged. You'll be held. You'll be loved on. But the work is your work to do. This is, program is not for you if you're not ready to choose you. If everything else is so important, if you're scared you're going to lose your house, your car, your job, this ain't for you. I'm telling you, it's not. And I, I want to encourage you not to sign up. 
If you think you're coming here to get some answers to some questions, if you think you're coming here for me or any of the clan mothers that I'm going to introduce to you briefly in a minute, if you think you're coming here to get us to do something for you, mm -mm, please don't. Because then I don't want you to go in and make all of the administrative changes to have to ask for a refund. <laughs> don't. If you're not ready. And hear me, beloved. If you're not ready right now, it's okay. Don't force yourself. Don't, don't, don't read it. It, it, it. Okay? It's all right. Maybe next time. But I want to be honest enough to say that to you because the world is calling for women to take their seat in the throne. But you can't sit in the throne if you're going to be hesitant, if you're not worried, if you're going to keep looking back, you're not going to be able to do it. So I don't want you to just do this because it's being offered and it sounds like fun. <laughs> okay. So you're in the right place. If you're ready to be the best version of you. These are some graduates from our 2019 Rites of Passage. I don't do this program every year. So if you think, oh, I'll do it next year. Mm -mm. I only do it when spirit guides me to do it. And they've guided me to do this this year. And next year I'm doing men. Okay. Because the work of this program, it's a lot. So I, it's not like I'm going to do it every, every other month. If you're really ready to make a change, and make it stick. And if you know you're transitioning, you know you're transitioning. And if you're 29, 39, 49, 59, even 69, you're in the midst of a transition. And whatever you didn't complete from the stage that you're leaving, it's going to show up in the stage that you're going into. Okay? All right. So here's what you're going to get when you sign up. You're going to get a supportive community a community, we call it a clan to help you navigate through this. And you're gonna, you're gonna get freedom because we're gonna release some patterns and not in the old psychological way, but we're gonna release some patterns from your being and your consciousness. And we're gonna change how you look at yourself and the world and people. And we're gonna build some resilience so that every little thing coming by doesn't knock you off your center. It doesn't mean that you're gonna have uh, brighter uh, teeth and fresher breath. You're still going to have to live your life. And some of the things that you're going to be carefronted with as you live your life, you'll just have new skills and ways to deal with them. You're going to break bonding patterns. You're going to remove belief blocks. That's the work that we're going to do. Okay. So how are we going to do this? We're going to support you. We're going to do nine weeks online. Nine weeks a weekly meeting as an overall community and a weekly meeting in your clan. Your clan means your age. So one week, all of us will gather and the next week we'll meet in our clans. We're going to do that for nine weeks, doing the work of the value in the valley, doing the work of every day I pray and doing the work to align and heal our internal energy. Nine weeks online, we'll meet once a week. And then in August, we're gonna come together for a four day retreat at the Art of Living Center in Boone, North Carolina, a beautiful, beautiful place in North Carolina. So that's what the program will consist of. And you'll work with a clan mother, I want to introduce some of them to you. You won't know what clan you're in until you sign up for the program, but I want to introduce the clan mothers to you. These are the women who have walked this path. These are the women that have done this program to me. I want to see if I can go in age order. So let me go all the way from, um, let me just see. A Boone Laughing Crow out of Lona, who is a fire keeper, a breath technician, our elder in our community. Good morning, Mama Boone. Can you hear Good me? Good morning. Yes. It's yes. good to be here with you. All the way from South Dakota. Is it still snowing there? No, we have sunshine. Oh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so what do you want to say to the women this morning, Mama Boone? I want to welcome you. 
I am here to help you to move forward with what it is that you are sent to this earth to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mama A. Boom. I want to introduce to you Ia Boomi, Irene uh, Robinson, all the way from Philadelphia. Irene has been is with a member of the Intervisions Institute faculty. She is an ordained minister. She is also a Yoruba priestess. Morning, Mama. How you doing? Alafia. Good what, morning. What do you want to say to the women this morning? Just welcome. Welcome. And it is so important to do your work. And I'm here for it and to assist you with love. Good. All right. Let me introduce them to Ia Carmen from Brooklyn. I mean, from New York. Where is she? Come on, Mama. Here you go. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Doing? I'm well, Mama. And I know the spiritual warriors know you from Spiritual Warrior 1 and 2, Captain Carmen, but she's also going to be a, a clan mother in the rites of passage. What do you want to say to the women this morning? I um, just want to welcome you all and congratulations on just taking the step to move forward in your divine energy in all areas of your life. I promise you. Your life will never be the same. Never. <laughs> You're welcome. Never. Let me introduce them to Ia Ilemi. Uh, I know she doesn't have a camera on, but we're going to get her on there. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Good we morning. Can't see, can't see you, Mama. This is uh, Ia oh, Sherwood from New Jersey, and she is the founder and director of Spirit and You Foundation. And I'm going to speak for her on May 12th. So all of y'all that are in Jersey, you need to come out and see me. Uh, okay, she lost her signal. She lost her signal, but she'll be in Jersey at the Spirit and You Foundation uh, on May 20th. And she's building this beautiful center in um, Newark. So I want y'all to be sure to, to support her. Ia Terry, how you doing? We can't see you. You got there. You are. You driving? <laughs> we can't hear you, Ma. Let me. Good morning, you. everyone. Hey, good morning. Good. So, what do you want to say to this? Is my Brooklyn sister to all you Brooklynites out there? This is another clan mother for you. What do you want to say to them this morning? Get ready for the ride. <laughs> yeah. And get ready to be supported. Um, if you tell yourself that you have problem with women, have problem with working with women and all of those wonderful stories that we'd like to tell ourselves because of some of the experiences we have had, know that today is a new day and you can make a new choice. Yeah. Thank you, Ia. You know, one of the things that I want to say, most of these women that I'm introducing you to, um, we've worked together for over 20 years. Over 20 years, most of us have been together uh, in one, some form or another. So I just want you to know that whole thing of you can't trust women, you can't be with women, you women are, you can't be trusted. That, that's something that we were programmed to believe. Um, and Mama Amasi, I always talk about Mama Amasi. I've never done anything in Intervisions without Mama Amasi. But her partner, our community husband, Baba Sherman, had to go to the hospital this morning. So she's there. So we just going to lift her up in prayer. Uh, we know that she's with us in heart and mind. I want to introduce you to Mama Danny. Mama Danny. How you doing, Danny? All the way hey. from All the way from Detroit. Good morning, Mama. How are you doing? Mama I am is wonderful. A, is a powerful body therapist, a massage therapist, but she's also going to serve as a clan mother. Mama, mm -hmm. what do you want to say to the women this morning? I just want to say I am so excited to welcome you into this process. Uh, as Ia stated earlier, um, if you want your life to up level in the, the spirit, this is the work for you. And we have, let me tell you something, we're not only up level in our lives, we dancing and singing and laughing and having a fine time, okay? <laughs> so yeah. yes, please, I yeah. look forward to, we await your arrival. 
Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. How many times has a woman heard somebody say that we await your arrival? <laughs> yeah. I want to introduce you to um, uh, Mama Ife, Ife Potter, uh, who's also going to be a clan mother in the process. Morning, Ife. Good morning, morning, morning. Um, I am just here to say welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, know that you will always be supported. I know that this this passage is basically just um, setting us in a path of power, knowledge, love, understanding, and just be willing and have an open heart to receive it all. Yes. Good. <laughs> Another clan member, Mama Karen Faluke Burns, is with us this morning, also from Jersey. She's really a New York girl, but she slips into Jersey every now and then. She's She's, what do they call it? She's um, fronting. She's fronting. <laughs> Brooklyn all day, every day. <laughs> Good morning, Mama. How are you? Good morning, Mama. I just want to say welcome. I, too, am so excited with you and for you, all the sisters on the line today. And I just want to say that we are here to support you in being the change that you want to see in the world. And once you do everything you touch, Will be affected by the change because you are that powerful. We yeah. believe in you. And as my sister said, we are so waiting for you. Yes. Good morning. I'm divine. I'm going to introduce you. She's not really a clan mother. She's the community mother. She is our minister of music, Reverend uh, Tammy Fiola uh, Manley. Morning, Pastor. How you doing? I can't hear you, Pastor. Let me unmute you. You're muted. There you go. Okay. All right. Good that morning. Was not a good advertisement for you as the minister of music. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Saturday and welcome uh, everyone. I, I am looking forward to be of service. And I say for all who are on this call that you have declared yourself ready. And once you make the declaration, the universe will step right in to meet you right where you are. Yes. So again, as everyone said, we await your arrival and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Happy Saturday. All righty. Uh, another clan mama. These are the clan mothers. These are the mothers that are going to be working with you in as we go through this process throughout the ten, the nine weeks together. And they'll all be present when we get to Boone for our ceremony and initiation. I want to introduce you all the way from Yale University, getting ready to get her divinity doctorate. Oh, somebody just hoot for me. I'm going to go ahead and say, Reverend <laughs> Tamara Foray Ravello. Good morning, my brother. Good morning. Good. Um, I just want to tell you all, welcome. We are ready to receive you, and we are going to have such a good time. So come, young women come, older women come, because we are going to get all that God has for us. Good. Now, listen, I, I know I'm moving fast, but I want to remind y'all, I said, you know, Ia Ilemi is opening a cultural center in New Jersey, Newark, New Jersey. Uh, Reverend Tamara is getting ready to graduate from Yale University. Um, Reverend da uh, Mama Danny has retired from the Detroit government. Reverend uh, Terry um, I mean, my point is that we are not just women sitting around rubbing crystals on our heads. <laughs> that we are in the world, we are moving, we are doing, we are growing, and we are standing in our power. And it, so it doesn't mean that you're going to have to walk around in low, fl long flowing dresses with no panties on. It just means that you're going to move in the world in a different way. Let me introduce you to another coach here. You know her. You've seen her. She's usually with us uh, on every program that I do. Coach Laura, good morning. Good morning. And <laughs> don't, don't believe everything she says. You could end up walking around in a flowy skirt with no underwear at some point. <laughs> but <laughs> it would be totally your choice. So I, good to see some of y'all. I, I love this program. I had um, some females in my life growing up. I had a lot of men in my life growing up. And most of them didn't know who they were as men or women. And, you know, my rites of passage came in being with much of this group of women. 
and it deepened with the process. And what I can tell you is that the more I knew myself as a woman, the easier it became to stand in my power. Mm. And it has changed everything for me. It has changed my whole life. I didn't have grown women in my life. No heat or shame on that for them because they didn't have grown women in their lives, right? But that's what I chose to come into this lifetime as. And I didn't, uh, maybe I had all the tools and they were still in the box, but the directions were missing. What this is going to do is it gives you the directions. And more importantly than that, the biggest thing I've ever gotten from Ayana and in Inner Visions is I saw what it looked like when it worked. <laughs> it's the it's the example of it and any of y'all that have done workshop with us you see how we move together and with each other and within ourselves now i'm not gonna lie i don't walk around like a lady most of the time outside of this but i know who i am as a woman so for those of y'all that are a little nervous about that if you don't know this is the time and i i've been saying this all the time to ia y'all never know when the opportunity is going to present itself again don't yeah. do it out of scarcity, but don't talk yourself into waiting if you're feeling inside that it's time to do it. So we can't wait to see y'all. It's exciting. And I see some of my babies from the last one here. So, you know, we was the best clan anyway, but <laughs> love y'all. And go. some of y'all are in new clans now. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Miss uh, uh, Coach Laura made a very, very important prospect. Lady female, woman, yeah? Sometimes we use those words interchangeably because we don't really understand what they mean. And we can stand as all of that, but we need to understand what they mean. I want to introduce you to another clan mother, my baby girl, Bolade. <laughs> Good morning. Some of you will uh, re remember her. She was a a captain and spiritual warriors. What do you want to say, share with the sister women this morning? Good morning, mama. Good morning, everyone. I just want to share. I also am excited to support you all on this journey. Um, I can hardly wait to see the evolution and the transformation and elevation that will come from your participation, your work um, in this process. So welcome and congratulations on taking the very first step to declaring what you desire in your life. Yes. Thank you, Bolade. And finally, last but not least, my beloved Zakia, Zakia, Z, Z, Z. <laughs> Many of you who are in the visions, you know Z. She's been around phenomenal um, entertainment everything. Okay. And again, I say that to you, not to impress you, but to let you know that you can stand in your power, walk in your power, live in your power and your authentic original self as a woman and still be able to move in the world. It's just that you won't be nailing the doors and the windows shut. <laughs> morning, Z. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I am honored to be here. I am always honored to be in a position of ser of service um, to each and every one of you. But I, I want to say this, that many are called, but few answer the call. Mm -hmm. And I want to remind you that we all have prayed prayers and you are here today because you prayed a prayer. And if this call is for you, this is an answered prayer. So take full advantage of this opportunity to shift, to heal, to grow, to learn and transform into your womanness. Know that you are supported. Know that we are standing with you and for you and everything that you need will be provided. And I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Z. So those are some of the clan mothers. I think we're missing. We were missing Mama Almasi and we were missing Mama Musina, but they will be present. And again, we say mama, because these are women who moved into their warrior healer phrase. They are elder women, uh, mama Ebun, mama Masi, mama um, Musina, and they're my elders. So I want you to know that I honor and respect that. So I've got 15 more minutes. I never told you what time we were going to get out of here. So let me go and tell you what I need you to know to, uh, 
to continue here in this process, rites of passage. So nine weeks online, and then we come together for a four-day ceremonial retreat in Boone, North Carolina. Um, once you register for the program, you'll get uh, eight weeks because the program does not start until June 3rd. But in that time, we want you to be tenderizing your consciousness, preparing yourself, adjusting your schedule so that when we start on June 3rd, you will be able to um, begin right away. But, you know, it takes time. We're not starting next week. And so you do have time. But once you register, once you get into the, um, uh, and once you uh, register for the program, what you immediately, you're going to get access to your digital workbook. And it already has some exercises and assessment tools because you got to assess where you are. You got to assess what's going on so that you know what it is you want to work on. You're going to get to create your intention for why it is you want to do this. And again, you're not coming to us to get anything other than support and love and guidance. You have to do the work. And I'm going to tell you three things now. Slow down. No rushing. Breathe. That's one of the things that happens to us as women. We're jumping all over the place all the time, running, 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 running. No, slow down. Take a breath. Pay attention. We've become so lazy with the social media. Everything is at our fingertips. We don't listen and we don't pay attention. Slow down. Pay attention. Follow instructions. Those that you hear within, follow the requests that are made of you if they honor you. Slow down. So immediately once you register, you get access to your dashboard. And there are a lot of resources there, assessment tools, things for you to start working in and working on. Yeah, there's a supply list because there's a list of supplies that you need. You're getting ready to engage in ceremony. You're getting ready to undertake a sacred process. Everything from what you bathe in to what you wear to what you need to do. So all of that is in your list. Um, there are two books we're going to be working with, Value in the Valley and Every Day I Pray, both of which I wrote. So you're going to, if you have them, dig it up out of the basement. <laughs> okay. You also have access to the community board where the community, not clans, but community can begin to talk so and communicate and connect so that we can begin to build this community. You'll also have access to prayer support. In the community, there's a prayer board. As you hit challenges, allow your sisters to pray for you. We're taught, particularly women of color, don't tell people your business. Yeah, well, tell your business if it means somebody's going to pray for you and lift you up. So you can issue your prayer request there. And we want to elevate those. I'm not praying for you and your boyfriend or you and your girlfriend. I'm praying for you, your clarity, your understanding, your wisdom, your discernment, your power. Let's pray for some things that are going to shift who we are on the planet so we can shift the planet. So this is what happens when you register. Access to the dashboard, access to your digital workbook, access to the community, access to prayer support. You won't meet your clan mother until the program begins. So here's what it looks like. We start on June 3rd. We'll be meeting nine weeks online, online for nine weeks. That means you can be anywhere in the world. We have our in-person ceremony and initiation in August. That is in person. That is in Boone, North Carolina. Okay. Nine weeks online, five days in person. So we run from June 3rd to July 29th. Every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 1, you will meet one week as an overall community and the next week in your clan. And your clan mother may choose another day other than Saturday. So we will have uh, bi-weekly community meetings and we will have bi-weekly clan meetings. So on the third, the whole community week meets, the next week, the clan meets, the following week, the community um, meets. So that's how we'll be doing it. You will have assignments 
and and in between. You have to do the work. And you're not doing it to get it right. You're not doing it to get it right. You're doing it to get you right. In your workbook, your reading, and your prayers. Um, your daily time investment for the nine weeks is maybe 45 minutes to an hour a day. So if you're not willing to carve out 45 minutes to an hour a day for yourself, then this is not the program for you. It's not because you're not going to be able to make it through if you don't do the work. Your weekly investment will be anything from five to seven hours because it's 45 minutes a day plus your three hour meeting on Saturday. Yeah. So um, the August meeting dates when we go to Boone, and that's why I say take your time to clean up your schedule to make arrangements for the kids. It's August 10th through August 13th, Thursday through Sunday. All right. So those of you who are going to have to fly in, maybe once we start meeting, clans, members, all the Brooklyn people will drive, the Detroit people, the Chicago people, you can drive, make it a road trip, leave a day early and, and go up the road. <laughs> all right. So your weekly time investment. All right. And what is the investment? You have to pay for the, the make a financial commitment for the program and a financial commitment for your um, your lodging at Boom, your lodging at the Art of Living Center. That's the name of it, Art of Living Center. What do you need? A willing heart, a commitment to the process, and you can reserve your spot today. And this is what it will look like. Nine weeks of training and a four-day in-person retreat. Pay in full between now and April 30th, it's $957. $957 to spend nine weeks in training with not only the clan mothers, but Iyanla Van Zandt. <laughs> Come on, let's be real. Let's be real, okay? That's $95.70 a week. Um, and if you, if you think that the way you do it and the way you're living and how you do it is right, this ain't the program for you. I'm telling you, you've got to be willing to give up everything because when they took the young girls or the young boys out for their rites of passage in the early time, those, they didn't get to say what happened. And sometimes as women, that's what we do. We, we want to say how it's done and what we don't like and what works for us and doesn't. Well, if that's where you are, please don't sign up. Please don't. <laughs> because you're going to get your feelings hurt. All right. So 957, full rate, early bird. That's one payment. And I understand this is an investment. So if you can't make a full payment today and you want to do two payments, you can do $498.50 today, and then you have 30 days to do the other $498.50. Or, you know, if you go to PayPal or um, one of the, you know how they, you can do overtime payments, Klarma and Alive and somebody else. You can do that also. After May 30th, the price goes up to $1,197. The payment plan is more than the, pay in full because it's administrative charges for us to do those payments. But this was what the financial commitment looks like. 957 to pay in full until April 30th. 997 uh between April 30th and May 20th. After May 20th, 1197. And you can register today, save your spot. Even whether you get the pay in full or you do the payment plan you will get access to your dashboards and your materials today, some of them. And if you choose later on not to complete the program, that's okay. The refund policy is also on the dashboard, all right? So here are the important dates. You can start your registration today. April 30 ends the uh, early bird pricing. We begin working on June 3rd, 10 a.m., and August 10th, 
We're going to meet in Boone, South Carolina. All right. That's it. PayPal credit, six months to pay, no interest. Thank you, Portia. See, that's how women work. <laughs> we let each other know what we need to know, okay? Now, let me just say this. That is for the workshop. That is not for your lodging and your boarding at, at Boom. We'll tell you more about that later. And you can have a single room, double room, triple rooms, clans can bunk up together, but we'll let you know about that. Let's do one thing at a time. Slow down, <laughs> pay attention, follow instructions, and do not allow the deceptive intelligence to tell you, I can't afford this. Don't let the deceptive intelligence tell you that. You absolutely can. Know how I know? Because you're a woman and you can create it. I want you to see some of the photographs from, uh, I don't know if this was 2017 or 2019 of the women as we were preparing. Um, we did it, we used to do it a week long in person. And some of you on here did that. And now we're doing nine weeks and three days in person. It's a much deeper work. It's a much deeper work, okay? So, um, I want to see if you have any questions that I can answer. Hopefully, I have some answers for you. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. How about if we can't? Wait a minute. Okay. I can't see that question. Let me go here. Let me do this. How about if I can't make it to the U.S. for the 40 to four days? Well, if you want to do that, you can. I wouldn't recommend it. I would say join and set the intention that you're going to get here from Germany. You got time to get a passport. You got time to buy a ticket. You're going to have a whole clan of sisters that will support you in getting to Boone, North Carolina. So don't sign up with the intention of what you can't do. Sign up with the intention of what you are going to do. I don't know. Is this HSA, FSA eligible? I have no idea what that means. What is that? Um, I'm not going to repeat the book names when you sign up. It's on your list. You'll get it then. Can you do this while in PDP year one? Ask yourself, is that what you need to do? Get still. Take a breath and ask yourself. Is that what you need to do? <laughs> Again, I'm not answering questions for you. You have the power. You have the right to do it. Um, you can go to uh, stuff. The, the link is in the, in the dashboard. So you can go and read and see what it is that we're doing. Uh, if we have no more questions, I'm going to let you go again. You will get a copy of this um, recording. I want to encourage you to go back through it, go back through it. For the payment plan, we pay half now and next month, can I sign up next? That's up to you. Again, see that kind of question right there? I'm not entertaining that. You got it. You're a woman. Figure it out. We're not going to engage in that kind of behavior. Can we attend if expecting? How, how, how far expecting? <laughs> how much expecting? Here's my only concern. A lot of the work that we um, are going to do is going to be about clearing and releasing. And I would say if you're in your first trimester, no. But if you're moving into your second and your third, absolutely. We, we, want, we don't want to mess around in that first trimester and have what you release and end up in the DNA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we can do the clearing and the energy work. You know, there are more than 7,000 people who are registered for this webinar and we have 500 spots. We have 500 spots. I can't do more than 500 people because we can't house them and uh, the clan mothers can't manage them, okay? Um, I have no idea for those, or I, the question came up, but then it went away. For those in Africa who can't get a visa, can they still do the program? 
If you'd like to do the nine weeks, so that's the same question as Germany. I would say do it. I would say do it. Just check in with yourself and make sure that's what you want to do. Um, we'd have to know that for sure, uh, that you're not going to make it because that frees up a housing space. But if you're in Germany, France, Italy, Brazil, wherever, and you want to do the nine weeks, I say go ahead and do it. Um, and we'll work out the rest later. Okay. All righty. If there are no more questions, if I miss the first day, will that affect me? I'll be on a business trip. You ask yourself that, beloved. Again, you ask yourself. This is the first day of a program that is for you. So you can be on the business trip and still do it or at, tell the business people, I've got a two a hour long commitment. I need an hour. <laughs> and then you get the recording. You at least want to be there for the first hour. I mean, that's another possibility. As women, we got to make it work for us. Okay. A business trip. You are your business. Got my spot already. Okay. Here we go. So Michelle Ewing has signed up. Room and board are not included in the registration pie. Yes. We'll tell you, listen, slow down, slow down, pay attention, follow instructions. You'll get everything you need. And see, here's the piece that we forget it with women because we're so busy doing it on our own. Once you sign in, the process begins and the universe will support you. Once you set your intention, you'll know how to conduct yourself and manage yourself so that everything you need will come to you. Maybe you, your family will pay your lodging for your birthday. Again, learn how to, we're going to be moving in community. You're moving in a whole nother way and you don't have to do it by yourself. Slow down, pay attention, follow instructions. The instruction is <laughs> you can sign up for this now if that's what you want to do, full price, early bird, however you want to do it. You can wait. You've got time. I just want you to know there are many more people than slots. And I'm not saying that to rush you because before you sign up, I want you to take a breath, pray, check in with yourself and make sure this is for you now, please. Otherwise, I wouldn't be, I'd be encouraging you to do something other than uh, be true to yourself. So I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Um, again, you will, if you signed up for the webinar, you will receive this recording. Go back through it. Listen to it. Breathe in it. Pray about it. Set, get yourself ready. Okay. Deep bow to you, my beloved sister women. And I look forward to seeing as many of you as possible uh, on June 3rd online and on August 10th in Boone, North Carolina. I'm gonna I'm bring you up clan mothers. Um, let me see how many of us we can get in here so we can say hi and bye and everything to everybody. <laughs> Yeah, come on in. There we go. Who else can I get up here? Where's Pastor? Danny's gone. There's Danny. Uh, there you are. Wait, Tammy. Are you there? Oh, yeah, you are there. Let me see. I think Ia Lemmy's gone. All righty. So, bye. bye. This is just the beginning. Bye. We'll see as many of you as possible in uh, Boone. North Carolina. Okay. All right, mamas. I will y'all can I'm gonna take you all out. Hang on for a minute for me, okay? And I didn't see Tamara either. Did I? There's for Luke. Oh, I can't get anybody else on the screen. All right. Bye. Bye.